If you woke up one day and had the power to rule the world, what would you do? This is the kind of situation that demon lords find themselves in. They have the power to nuke entire nations at their fingertips. Personally, the thought of having that much power would be overwhelming for me, and I'd probably just live my life like a normal person. Kind of like Mao from The Devil is a Part-Timer, there's something incredibly fascinating about the idea of the demon lord. People love them so much that they appear all over Japanese media, but especially in Isekai, where they basically have taken over as either the primary end goal of the series or literally being the MC. So how the fuck did we get here and why are demon lords so badass? In general, isekai as a genre has strong ties to JRPGs. You could even argue that it's a genre written by and for JRPG nerds. So it's no surprise that all of the common genre stereotypes also find their way into light novels, manga, and anime. You can't talk about demon lords without bringing up perhaps one of the most influential pieces of media to anime fantasy. Dragon Quest, also known as Dragon Warrior early in the west, paved the way for almost all of the basic tropes people think of when they hear demon lord, as well as the hero tropes. The main antagonists of Dragon Quest 1 and 3 codified a lot of the elements that defined demon lords, such as being tied to monsters, dark magic, and being powerful enough to change the very state of the world and the creatures living in it with just their presence. The Dragon Lord from Dragon Quest 1, for example, caused large portions of the land to be covered in poison and the emergence of monsters. One of the isekai demon lords that come to mind when I think about this is Ariel from Kumo Deska Nanika or Soma Spider So What. Ariel is connected to an entire species of monsters, the terror attacked spider monsters, through their souls and their presence in the world is directly linked to her existence. A demon lord's relationship with monsters cannot be understated and it's one of the things that makes them so cool in my opinion. Another aspect of the demon lord is the sorcerer element both the Dragon Lord and the antagonist of Dragon Quest 3, Zoma, used this heavily in their design. The original Japanese term Maho, which is often translated as Demon Lord or King, is strongly connected to magic and as such, Demon Lords all tend to be extremely skilled in it, like Ainz for example. Generally, this is the series that started the seemingly never-ending conflict between heroes that defend humanity and the demon lords that threaten it. Dragon Quest's influence extends far past just these factors, and if I were to go into every detail, we'd be here forever, so let's just say that that's its own video. Isekai in general is built on the idea of taking these familiar tropes from JRPG fantasy stories and examining them from the perspective of what if I was in that situation? What would I do if I was a hero in an RPG setting? Well the next series that was super influential to Demon Lords and Isekai at large really went in depth on this topic, while even managing to explore a lot of unique concepts on its own. And that is the Rant series. Rant is an Aroge visual novel RPG hybrid series and is arguably one of the first series to ever examine and parody JRPGs. It's having a fascinating effect on modern anime fantasy. For example, there's are a couple of isekai and or anime fantasy characters that were obviously inspired by the main character slash title character Rance, with their designs placing a heavy emphasis on the color green and having a very unheroic personality. This includes Kazuma from Konosuba, Naofumi from Shield Hero, and quite obviously Keiaruga from Redo of Healer. But this isn't a video about heroes, this is about demon lords, so what does Rance bring to the table as far as its influence on that? Rance's influence stems from the Demon King system, created by the gods of the Rance world. The Demon King is the master of all monsters, as well as the greatest threat to humanity, and the Demon Lords are his direct subordinates, empowered by his blood. The Demon Lords thereafter can do the same thing to create apostles that follow their direct command. 
In my opinion, I think this is reflected in how colorful the cast of subordinates a lot of demon lords have in modern isekai. In that time I got reincarnated as a slime, this is basically what the naming system of that series is. After which, Rimuru has a connection to all the monsters he's named. They even grow stronger as he officially ascended to the position of Demon Lord. The strong sense of character and personality each of Rimuru's followers has is very characteristic of something you'd see in the Ranch series. Also, the sheer number of Demon Lords. In Ranch, there is no singular Demon Lord. There are many with radically different appearances and personalities, and Slime pretty strongly captures that. Also, the governing of monsters in a kind of hierarchy is very Ranch. And is seen in a variety of modern isekai like Konosuba and Overlord. Though I think the most fascinating aspect of Rance's influence is in its satirical and deconstructive look at demon lords and JRPGs in general. In the Rance series, things are rarely ever black and white and demon lord and the demon king are often presented in a very humanized fashion, something that the simplicity of early Dragon Quest didn't really do as much. Modern isekai I often dissect the tropes and ideas found in fantasy and JRPGs by flipping things on its head, having the unheroic protagonist and a reasonable demon lord for example, and I think a lot of that has its roots in rants and other series like it. Hey, Jade from the future here, I also need to clarify that these terms I use, I specifically use Demon Lord for most of everything, but this isn't necessarily the terms that are going to be used in the particular series I talk about. I'm specifically referring to the archetype whenever I say Demon Lord. In the case of Rance, I already added a little note saying that they're called Dark Lords in Rance in particular, but in the English translation, the official English translation anyway, of the Rant series, they are referred to as fiends and the arch fiend for Demon King. So just letting you know, if you do go out and like try these things I've recommended here or I'm talking about here, that that is a, definitely a thing, that translations do vary and I'm talking about the archetype in general. Now before I can go into my grand conclusion of the video, I have to talk about Yeez. As a Falcom fanboy myself, it's really interesting to think about how much of an impact it's had on anime fantasy as a whole, and how relatively close Yeez, Dragon Quest, and Rants are in release of their respective first games. The impact of Yeez personally, I think, is a lot stronger on the front of its hero, Adol Kristen, and how he and the Dragon Quest III protagonist, Edric, basically created the hero archetype. The Demon Lord of the first Yeez game, Dark Fact, is pretty similar to his contemporaries. He caused a surge of monsters to appear, he's a powerful magic user, the mastermind behind all of the chaos happening in the story, etc. But he's unique in just how much of an active role he plays in the lore and the events of the story. Dark Fact really goes out of his way to eliminate any obstacles to his dominance. Stealing important items, assassinating important NPCs, kidnapping and imprisoning an important character. He's a lot more active in the story than the Dragon Lord and evokes very rant vibes in that sense. To tie this back to modern isekai characters, Ainz, for example, has been seen scheming and manipulating the world in a very direct way that's reminiscent of this rather than just about having his servants do everything. Though generally, as I said before, Yeez's influence is much stronger on the side of its protagonist, so that's gonna be its own video. Now I know that was a lot to take in, but establishing the base for our understanding is really important to getting what the deal with modern demon lords is. Is. They started out as just some bad dudes waiting at the end of the game for the hero to show up and through parody and experimentation they evolved over time. The desire to do this comes from what I said earlier in the video. Most modern Japanese creators grew up on games like Dragon Quest and Yeez, so putting a spin on these concepts is pretty easy for them. Little things like what if the demon lord was a hot girl, for example, is a pretty easy twist to do considering that most early anime fantasy games outside of a rogue like Rance had specifically male demon lord antagonists. On that note, 
note, one of the most common shifts in the Demon Lord narrative is what if the Demon Lord was good? Today, there's no shortage of Demon Lord protagonists out there, but back in the day, the Demon Lord was largely an antagonist role. It was such an unspoken, fixed concept in the world these stories take place in that early satirical series like Rants created an entire world governing rule around it. Later isekai like Kumo Desga, Nanika, and Slime would do something similar by having the title of Demon Lord be a consistent variable of the world. In some ways, the Demon Lord role has been played around with a lot more than the traditional Yusha hero archetype which is a lot more subject to scrutiny and examination as a lot of isekai stories go out of their way to present some of the characteristics of a traditional hero as being kind of whack. A great example of this is with Shlane from Spider Sakai who embodies the traditional characteristics of a hero that never gives up but placed in a realistic context. His stubbornness literally almost gets his friends killed. The more popular heroes these days seem to be the pragmatic hero, which explains the arrival of series like Cautious Hero or How a Realist Hero Rebuilt the Kingdom. In some cases, the hero even appears as an antagonist in the story causing trouble rather than helping people, like the spear, bow, and sword hero from Rising of the Shield Hero. I think this shift in the way heroes are presented in media coincides with society's views on the world in general. We now live in a world where a lot of the ugliness of society is laid bare for anyone to see just by going on the internet. It's hard to believe in honest pure heroes when you can see people behaving horribly on a day-to-day -day basis. A demon lord protagonist who isn't afraid to get his or her hands dirty fits far better in the current viewpoint a lot of people have on humanity. People love Ayn scheming and the way he puts on the strong act for the rest of Nazareth. People love Rimiru's flexibility. They love characters like Kumoko who do everything in their power to survive while also being kawaii as fuck. And this is why characters who are demon lords or very demon lord-esque have basically conquered Isekai in the minds and hearts of the audience. Kinda like you and me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next video. Thanks and later.